I'm very lucky myself that I have a great spouse. She's been very patient, <laughs> very supportive. <laughs> and um, I, I can't thank her enough for allowing me to be who I am. At times, it could be very difficult, not just on her, but on the family, because I have these rings. And to your point, like you were saying, you know, I've been doing this myself. It's my fourth year now. We met about three, three years ago or so. And um, the first couple, few years has is, is really been trial and error. A lot of steps back. A lot of retooling. You know, but I would consider that as my foundation years. You know, my, my time I was building my foundation. You know, screwing it up. So now I'm kind of looking at the, the, the blueprint for the framework now. That's how I feel this year is for me, right? Do you feel that's what this year is for you? Do you feel like you're in a, you already have your floor built? Do you feel like, you know what? I demolished everything and I'm going from scratch. I don't, I, I, I don't think I've demolished everything. I still feel that I have some of the principles that I've used in the past. I just haven't really relied on them. So for example, you know, goal setting, I'm a huge fan of goal setting. I'm a huge fan of, you know, something I learned years ago was called HVAs, high value assignments. So each day people will do this. They'll sit down and they'll write down like their to-do list and they write down 10, 12, 15 things. And it becomes a to not do list because you get overwhelmed. So with HVAs, high value assignments, you write down one, two, three things at the most. I, what gonna, three things pause, are going to get right there? Yeah. I really want to touch on okay. this. This is fantastic because in the past, you know, I do a fucking vision board, right? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of shit about fucking vision board of things I just want, right? And it was difficult to, to focus in because you kind of, just, you, you, you want to see all these things get you know, done. But then you also put the, the premise without saying it, that it has to be done within a year. Right. I think people don't build in timelines into their goals when they do these vision boards. Mm -hmm. I think it should be less than more on their vision boards or goals. I think you should really focus on if it's just one thing, Let's focus on that one thing. Let's smash it. Let's be subject matter experts at it. Let's, you know, let's really fucking like hone it in and be, a, a, you know, the best we can be on that thing. Or maybe two, three at the most. Even then, I think for someone who's starting two or three, it's kind of stretching it. I think you should work on your mindset and work on your goal and really focus on the steps to your goal and not so much on the overall goal itself. Right? Because you're looking at the summit. That's fantastic, but let's talk about how you're going to climb up there. You know, mm -hmm. let's talk about how you are going to fucking have failure in your gear, or you're going to get, you know, you're going to slip and fall back some yardage, right? But you may gain some yardage from what you've just learned as well, right? Right. I don't hear people talk about that enough. You know, I, I, I you know, I'm on YouTube. I'm looking at stuff for, for this year as far as goal setting. I just did a 12 point podcast. On from Indeed that I found on what you do about goals, and it was it was okay. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't the best. I still put it out there, but I feel like it's just kind of the same old same old. I did it on purpose. Then I wanted to talk to you about this because we again we're we're, we're very experienced about writing goals down. We're very experienced about not following them. We're very experienced about maybe pushing some harder than others, and you know, and and putting more on our plate than we can. Right, actually execute on. So when you're saying this right now, I just think I'm loving that you're saying this because it's like this is I think what real people need to hear. Real people need to hear real experiences from real people. Not to say that the people who are out there and are making millions of dollars are not real people, but they're so far from us, right? They have a different lens now because of where they're at, and not to say they didn't work hard to get to where they got to. But I need someone for myself that's kind of maybe two or three levels above me I can still touch. I can still relate to. 
I can't relate to to Tony Robbins anymore. You know, he has some great content, or even Gary V, great content, but I, there's no relation there anymore for me. I want to see someone that's two years in. I can say, damn, that could be me in two years. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like we. I think we need to kind of really kind of pare down our goals and focus, like you said, maybe one to three. Well, I, a couple of things that come to mind, you know, number one, you're talking about, you know, people that are relatable to you. And as you, as you are well aware, I, I deleted my Facebook account. I deleted my Instagram account. Why did you, you know, do that? part of it was, <laughs> well, part of it was because, you do see people that, you know, they're on top of the mountain, but it's not realistic. It's not somebody who I really want to hang out with anyway. Right. And so the other thing too, is the only reason why I got, because I had deleted my Facebook account years ago, but then I hired a business coach and his coaching which is primarily group coaching, everything was done through Facebook. Well, in, in my opinion, that business coach, he is, he's brilliant. He's a great person, but I, I think he started to lose a little bit of his, not his message per se, but just he, he was getting to, the next level. And I wasn't ready yet, even though he was growing, which was fantastic. I wasn't growing and therefore I I wasn't keeping up. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm done with that type of social media. I was on LinkedIn and I saw somebody posting saying that they were leaving Facebook and Instagram. And I was like, I think that was a sign for me because in my, my business opinion is if Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, if they all go away tomorrow, you don't own that content. You don't own any of those videos. You don't own any of those likes. You don't own any of the, your followers. So therefore to me, what makes better sense is having a website is using, you know, uh, platforms to, to like to blog and to use video that stay on your website. Something else that you're talking about. I, I always remember hearing a a conversation about um, venture capitalist, Peter Thiel and Peter Thiel always talked about, you know, going back to talking about, you know, goal setting and setting dates. And right. one of the things, any, any new, uh, new entrepreneurs will come to him and, you know, they do the whole slide deck and say, well, within a couple of years, we can be here. And Peter Thiel would always say, why a couple of years? Why, why can't you do it in 12 months? Why can't you do it in eight months? And that was a wake up call for me personally going, why, why do I have to, you know, set a goal for a year from now? Why shouldn't I set, you know, not only just daily goals, but then as you were already alluding to, you break them down, you break down your goals to, you know, like I was saying earlier. All right. So 10,000 steps for me, my goal by 2022 and I know this is going to be a little bit convoluted and a little bit of an oxymoron, but you know, talking about a year out, but you have to break down those goals. So by the end of 2022, my personal goal for my fitness, for my weight is the range of 170, 175. However, I have them broken down already. I already know um, how much, you know, average each week, drop down two pounds by the end of January, I already have written down and I, in my book here where I want to be in January, where I want to be in February, where I want to be in March. I have it broken down. And again, to your point, 
we put up those vision boards and we don't set dates. We don't set down or sit down and say, where do I want this goal? How do I want to hit that goal by when? And again, using the secret as an example, we go out and we visualize it. Great. But like you said, there's the peak. Matter of fact, it's a clear day. I can somewhat see uh, the Rocky Mountains from my home office. I can see that peak. But how am I going to get there? What are the steps? What is your plan? And again, you're, you nailed it. We see, we see the end goal. Dr. Wayne Dyer always talked about think from the end. Well, how are you going to get there? What steps are you going to formulate? You know, again, what's going to get you out of bed every single day to, to drag your butt to that dreaded day job that you hate? But how are you going to reverse engineer it? How are you going to take that day job and, and use it? So I always tell people, instead of calling it a dreaded day job, call it your silent partner. Your silent partner is bringing you income. Your silent partner is helping you and will help you achieve to land on that peak. But again, you have to break it down. You have to uh, execute the plan to get you there. I love what you're saying. You're right. And I, I want to give people an example who are listening out there. And when we, when, as far as when we talk about steps, right? So let's say you want to buy a home. And your home is your ultimate goal, right? And you have a, you have the house you have in mind. So you found it on, on Google, whatever you print it out. I don't want to cut magazines out no more, right? So if you find your mm-hmm. home, you print it out. Unless you have a virtual board and you have it on your desktop, whatever. Right. But the steps that Tommy is talking about myself are, okay, is your credit on point? Right. Oh, yeah. Do you have a down payment? And what type of percentage of down payment? Do you do your research to see, because of your salary, what you may be pre-qualified for? Right. Because I can look at a beautiful home. Doesn't mean I can actually afford it. Right. And this is where goals also have to be realistic, right? We're not looking to have, to have visuals of dreams. We're looking to be realistic. Not to say you can't grow and in the future maybe get to there, right? But that's the start. Let's begin. And, and everyone usually begins in a starter home. And then from your starter home, you tend to upgrade. It happens all the time, Right. These are where people, this is the, the, the breaking down of those goals. Now, to break it down even more, to get more micro, uh, micro with it, is where now you're looking at, okay, well, now we put my credit report. How bad is it? <laughs> you know, what do I need to pay off? Let me start paying something off. Let me start maybe getting a secured card, you know, to grow my credit, you know, go from there, right? Down to, okay, am I ready for an agent yet? I'm not. Let me wait a year and can I put 10 grand away in a year? Can I save for that house? And then when you're saving for your house, you should have a special account and name it house money, down payment, whatever the hell you want to name it. That way in your head, when you see that account, you don't see the money first, you see the name. You see the purpose for the money. It's going to help you not touch it. Because you see random money in your account without any type of purpose for it and we are visual creatures if you don't see those words for house down payment on there you're going to spend it you're going to think it's another savings and you're going to use it for something else and we have to get back on not spending as much getting things you want to move forward that's just an example for that particular scenario that's breaking down we can even break it down in a more even more granular than that right Again, but these are the steps you have to take before you get to the house. Once you get the house, yes, now you're on top of the summit. And then now what's your next goal? There's several things you have to always include into that. And as you do so, you're going to be happy. You're going to be more um, educated on how to handle your business, how to handle your money, your finances, how to move towards your goals. 
that single year of you just doing that, being disciplined, which I don't think people talk about enough is discipline. Where they get caught up in inspiration and motivation. And those things are very temporary. If you're waiting for inspiration, good luck. Because you don't know when the fuck that's going to come. Right? Motivation, it comes and goes. Right? It's a new year. People are motivated probably to work out, go to the gym. By February or March, they're dropping the fuck out. Because the motivation has run away. You got to have that drive. Right? So as you talk about your goals for this year, goals for myself this year as well, I'm more focused on my drive and my consistency than motivation or inspiration. When it comes, that's fantastic. Because I want to motivate myself. I want to see me go over these milestones, give myself, like you said before, like give yourself a high five. Give yourself that pat on the back. Give yourself that self-recognition. That's going to motivate me and say, yeah, this is working. And as inspiration comes, and it's going to come, it's going to hit you. Allow that to be this thing. Let it come when it comes. But if you're sorting it out and you're making that your goal to sort motivation and, and inspiration out, then you're not going to be successful. You're looking at the wrong thing. So that's where my concern for people are is where you see, again, all these vision boards, I want you guys to narrow it down. I want you guys to make one or two, maybe three goals tops, and that's it. You know, and then from there, really work on the steps to get to your goal. Not just that horizon you see in the back, that vista that you see, you know, and then go from there with it. But again, like I said, I want you to also focus on more of the discipline. Get up and do the work on the days that you don't fucking feel like getting up. And those are the days you actually win more when you don't want to. Uh, you know, to use a house example again, the way I would even, and not to to frame it, so to speak, would be, again, what you were stating is, all right, I have to look at my credit rating. I have to look at, you know, um, do I have extra income to start putting into that, you know, house account? Right. One other thing I would add is create a way of, of getting a, a side hustle yeah. because that side hustle can help you get to that goal sooner. So for example, if you're, if you have a, a day job where maybe you're an accountant, maybe you can do some accounting on the side for somebody. Maybe you're a really good uh, writer. Maybe you can do some copywriting. Maybe you can do some editing. You know, bring in a little bit of income and stash that money into that one account that's going to get you into but, that but house. Tommy, I would even. We're, we're told even, to work smarter, not harder. Right? Yeah, but here's the what, thing. What does that, what does that you, mean to you? You, 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 named, you named. Well, here's. What it means to me is you you named people like Tony Robbins, you named Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, um, I would even say, you know, uh, Reed Hoffman, who created LinkedIn. These are three people that are multimillionaires. Do they do it the same way? Hell no. They took a different path to get there. Work harder, work smarter. It, it, that's going to be you know, depending on that person, that person is going to figure out what's going to work best for them. Again, to use you and I, an example, we've, we've seen how badly we've screwed up for years. Did we work smarter and harder? Possibly, but did we really look at how we were trying to get to the next step? Did to, to the summit? Did we try and just make leaps to the summit without really realizing that we should have maybe taken a different path or a different road? I look at, you know, again, the, the house example. How can you get there? What steps can you take? You know, I would I would definitely use a vision board. I would actually go to 
Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, and go look at fixtures. You know, it's like if your dream is to own a Porsche, Lamborghini, a Range Rover, go to those car dealerships, go feel it, go sit in it. Have somebody take a picture of you sitting in that car. Somebody taking a picture of you in your dream home. Visualize yeah, it. But again, like we've already said, yes, but do the work. What's it going to take you to get into that dream home? What's it going to take you to get into that dream car? It, it, it's, it is about executing. It's visualizing it. But again, you got to do the work. You got to do the things that you're not going to be happy with, like going to a job you dread, but then reframing it, changing the mindset of don't call it your dreaded day job. Call it your silent partner. No, I think you're right. I think we have to reframe love our language around certain things and be very honest with ourselves. Okay, so you hate your job. Great. Well, to your point, this is a partnership, right? I Another thing, too, you did agree to whatever salary they gave you. You agreed to the job that they gave you, right? It, it, was, it was a mutual agreement. To your point, if you want to move things a little faster to get that home in eight months to, a, to a 10 months to a, to a year, yeah, getting a second income is going to help, right? Uh, third income is going to help. And and the reason why I asked that question of, you know, that adage that we always hear, you know, works smarter and harder, people actually take that too literal. Mm -hmm. People are always saying, well, I don't want to work hard. I want to work smarter. You can't. Once, once you work super hard on something and you kind of make your breakthrough and you know once you make some dollars and cents it does help you to take away some of the pain or stresses you had when you were making that breakthrough it gives you more resources as you have more resources you begin to do work smarter but working harder is never going to stop right if you want to continue the lifestyle you're living in you continue have to work hard but your resources and are going to assist you in that endeavor to make it seem like you're not just breaking your back, you know, and you're sweating all fucking day long, you know, in this, in this painful like, environment. Um, and that's where people really have to get in their thick fucking skulls and they hear that adage, you know, work smarter, not harder. It's, it's, it's for the people who are stuck, who are, have no advancement in their career, who keeps on running into a brick wall. At that point, it's okay, work smarter, not harder. You're working harder for what exactly at this point? You're just clocking in, clocking out to make ends meet. Working smarter would be, okay, well, this is a dead-end job. Let me find another job that can give me certain levels I can grow into, whether it's leadership roles or whatever that is, right? Let me go educate myself and get a new skill. That's working smarter now because now you command more money. You still have to work hard at that job because you also have to work hard at freaking learning skill set, but it's going to give you that openness to work smarter and harder at the same time, not just smarter and leave you get the hard work. Through. Well, my, my thinking, listening to you talk about work harder and work smarter and using an example of somebody, you know, working at a job that they, they hate. The part of the issue is as humans, we get, caught up in, in the moment of I'm going to settle, that I'm going to not want to take that risk, that I don't necessarily want to, you know, look for another job because what happens if the company finds out, oh my gosh, I'm looking for another job. Right. So what, what people do is they get stuck, like you said, and not only do they get stuck, but they settle and they settle. And that's, you know, going back to, I was settling, you know, I, it was a job I hate, hated, um, but I was settling because I was afraid to totally pivot 
of what I rather be doing. And ironically, that's one of the words 